All right, so feel yeah, free to uh, go ahead, guys. Awesome, Thank sure. Uh, I can start. Um, so my name is Lauren. I am in my third year of chemical and iBio here at McMaster. Um, so I guess I'll just start by saying um, like why I chose um, ChemEng, and then we can go around and everyone can say the same. Um, so I actually originally was in mechanical engineering, and I transferred to ChemEng halfway through um, my first or second year. So like I just wanted to put that out there so that you guys know like whatever you choose, it's not like concrete and you're not stuck to it by any means. Um, so I just switched from mechanical to chemical, which is like completely polar opposites and I'm not losing any time. I'm just taking like a few extra courses, um, but I'm not losing any time, which is like super important to me. Um, and yeah, I transferred to chem uh, because I honestly didn't enjoy mechanical as much as I thought and chemical was very, very different. Uh, and one of the things I really liked about chemical is it kind of starts like from ground zero. So mechanical and like civil and even like software and stuff, they kind of build off some concepts that you learn in first year. But what I loved about chemical engineering is that you kind of started like from nothing, like nothing that really a lot of the courses that you take in first year, like they don't really translate too much to second year, um, which like I really liked that it was like a fresh start and they built your knowledge from like the ground up, um, which is one of the main reasons that I chose chem. I can go next. Um, okay, sure. my, name is, okay. <laughs> my name is Kira. I'm also I'm in second year at iBio and Chemical. And so one of the main reasons I chose Chem was the same reason as Lauren. I really liked that it kind of started from the beginning. Like you have really general courses in your second like second year of Chem. Um, as you take like Chem Edge Principles one and two, which kind of give you all the basics that you need to kind of build up and um, specialize and uh, take more uh, technical courses in third and fourth year, and then I guess fifth year for us. Um, so the way I made my decision was primarily by taking away the streams that I knew I didn't want. Um, so for example, like the stuff that we learned in physics, like 1803, that stuff wasn't really my thing. So I kind of immediately could cross off things like electrical and entries and that just wasn't um, what I wanted. And I narrowed it down to materials and chemical. And my strategy was looking at the upper year courses. And I kind of was like compared both on the course calendar and looked at like not even just second year, but looking forward into third and fourth year. And the courses that were offered in chem would just seem more interesting to me. And they seemed kind of like more what I would like. And I'm really happy with my decision. So that worked out for me. OK, I guess I'll go next. Um, my name is Anushree. And I'm also a second year in chem and I bio. Welcome to the chem live stream, I guess. Um, and the reason why I chose chem is because, um, well, okay, going back to why I chose iBio, I never really wanted to like lose a science per se. And iBio is something that like takes into account biology and chemistry and physics really, really well and like embellishes it with health sci and puts everything together kind of. And so I didn't want to lose anything once again. So like chem, um, brings back chem, physics, and bio all together. So I get that like holistic um, view and experience through my education that I've always wanted. All right. Um, my name is Matthew. I'm also in second year chem and bio. And uh, I chose chem, I chose chemical out of first year because um, I'm very interested in pharmaceuticals. And I saw from also looking at the, the courses that you take down the road, um, there are more like there are a couple of interesting ones that you could take um, throughout the chemical stream um, that and chemistry in first year was one of my better marks. So it was relatively easy for me. Uh, also, awesome. I think to, to know in terms of like chemical, I feel like a lot of people associate chemical engineering with like, if I don't like chemistry, I won't like chemical engineering. But chem -eng is like very different than chem 103. Like it's totally <laughs> It's totally different. Yeah. Um, honestly, you don't really fully understand what ChemEng is until you actually start learning and doing your ChemEng courses. Like even still, like I chose it knowing a lot about it, but not even to the full extent until I got into my first ChemEng course and I kind of understood what it really was. And we can, we'll probably touch on this a lot more later, like throughout the whole live stream. But it's important to know that if like you don't love chemistry, it doesn't mean that you won't like chemical engineering, so. Yeah, so just to like yeah. elaborate on that, like I wanna like break down like a few like stereotypes of chemical engineering before we start the first one yeah like is chemical engineering chemistry and like it is not at all i think i used a periodic table like one time in all of second year and i don't even remember what it was and since then i haven't looked at it um so like has nothing to do with chemistry like very very different acids bases like orgo that doesn't come into play like at all um 
so kind of like not super relevant um, in ChemEng. Another stereotype that I want to like throw out the door is that there's no coding in chemical engineering. A lot of people pick chemical engineering for the sole purpose that there's no coding. Um, but like keep in mind that chemical engineering, like they do, a, we do a numerical methods course, which is like completely MATLAB based. And like we do a few courses um, as well that are MATLAB based. Um, but that being said, to put like a, a positive spin on it, um, I bio courses in third year and second year utilize MATLAB. And I actually found being in ChemEng and taking these MATLAB based courses that I was better set up um, to actually tackle the, the I bio assignments than even some of my friends in like Tron and like software were. Like I was able to help my Tron friend with like MATLAB syntax because we um, did it so much in ChemEng. But like, I just do want to point out, like you do learn from the bottom up. Um, they start explaining like coding and MATLAB to you all over again, um, which is really awesome because it's like a new thing that you guys haven't learned. But I do just want to like state state that because chemical <laughs> does have some coding. So if that's the only yeah. reason you're going into chemical, like maybe reevaluate because we do use it. Um, but all iBios use it as well. We use MATLAB quite a bit in second year and third year in our iBio courses. So it's honestly not a bad thing to, to have in chemical because like there is some crossover. So yeah, just wanted to start with too, that. The prof who teaches the MATLAB course, his name is Jake, and he's honestly like so, so good. And even though in first year, I wasn't a big fan of coding, it wasn't really my thing. I didn't like hate it, but I didn't love doing it. Um, and like, I actually enjoyed that course just because he loved coding so much and that really like translates to how you're learning it. And I found it really like generally interesting because he was the prof, so yeah. And another misconception that I'd like to touch on is um, that ChemEng is like leads to oil and gas kind of stuff, or even just like, just pharmaceuticals it's kind of um it's kind of something that we don't really have to worry about because we're in iBio like you can clearly see how like bio and chem directly correlate with each other but especially like people that just go into straight chem and kind of worry a lot about um just getting co-ops in oil and gas for example there's so many there's so many industries out there like there's food manufacturing because PepsiCo also hires for McMaster a lot um there's like pulp and paper for example or water treatment like Suez um, and also like medical devices industries that also hire for ChemEng schools. Mm -hmm. It's very diverse, which is a big plus about ChemEng, I think. Yeah, mm -hmm. you can do a lot of things that you don't think that you can do with Chem. Like for example, after DP2 last year, so the hip implant project, it was something that I really liked and found really interesting, which is one of the things that helped me narrow my choice down to Chem and materials. And I talked to a bunch of profs at some of the info nights uh, toward the end of the year. I don't know if you guys have met Dr. Wool. He's in a uh, mechanical engineering prof. And I talked to him at one of the uh, events and he told me that if I was interested in going to implants, that like chemical materials are both like equally, like you think you'd associate like in implants more so with materials, I would say. But he said that I have an equal opportunity to go into both fields, fully prepared to go into implants, whether I chose chemical or materials. So it's an interesting thing to note that like there's different opportunities in chem that you may not realize that you have. Uh, by being in it and definitely don't like narrow your focus like Nishi said onto like one sector that's like the most common for people to go into. And like that uh, segues pretty well like I think we're going to briefly talk about like co-ops that we've done or like research that we've done I think is on the agenda so like I'll start I'm about to start a 16-month co-op at a pharmaceutical company um so like yeah just to like reiterate that you can really do a lot with ChemEng I'm going into like a corporate engineering position um, at a company called Septodont and they make uh, dental anesthesia as well as um, they just deal with like other pharmaceuticals so they create like cartridges and different companies can come and give them like or let them know that they want to um, package like their drug or like their pharmaceutical product and Septodont will take them and package them into their cartridges and then uh, redistribute them so there's like kind of two sides about working in it um, so that's something that I'm doing next summer. And then in addition, uh, the summer before I worked at Venture, which is um, a really cool experience that I loved. It was, um, it's a summer camp that McMaster has. It's like a STEM engineering camp. So instructors will work there and you get a class um, and you like teach them all different types of like STEM engineering and you deal with a different class every single week. And it also counts as co-op, which is really fun. So those are my past and future co-op experiences. I personally don't, don't have I don't know if any of us have any. 
yeah. <laughs> I mean, that was it. I'm not doing a call this summer. That was my own personal choice, but that wasn't uh, related to not be able to find a job. Um, but I won't like touch on that because it's kind of unrelated <laughs> to what we're talking about. So we can move. What do you guys? What should we talk about next? Uh, yeah, and just while you guys figure out what we were gonna touch on next, I can just explain like a few other co-ops that other people have because I know that co-ops are quite interesting. So a uh, third year, uh, Cam My Bio has a job working at um an oil and gas company. So although, yeah, it's not something that you have to do, like those are avenues that you can explore. Um, as well in chemical engineering, uh, she she wasn't in chem, chem and I bio particularly, but like she worked at Tesla. Um, so like there is experiences that you can have in chem and that are like beyond pharmaceuticals and beyond oil and gas. And like there is a lot more to it. Um, there is a fourth year right now that work is working at NASA. As she's in chemical engineering. Um, so there's like lots that you you can do with it um, and different co-ops that are available um, but yeah there's a there's a few extra ones also I think it's pretty cool because like you guys are our third year into this program so I mean we're also like learning about the opportunities that we can even take ourselves with our degree because it's so new yeah exactly that's a thing with iBio in general is like a lot of iBios are just kind of getting those large co-ops now that we're in third year we have more like skills that we can actually translate um, that being said, like there's a, a third year in software, his, his name's Akil. He got an internship at Slack, Google, Instagram, uh, like right out of first year. So it can definitely happen. Um, but I think a lot of like the employable skills come as you get further through um, like, like your stream, which I guess we could talk a little bit about one of the prompt questions here is like, how has our experience been in the chem engine department? Um, which is something that we could touch on. Like I can start with this one. I wanted to kind of go back to the fact that I transferred from a different program. Um, and I, I did, I did as much as I have a lot of respect for mechanical engineering, like I love chemical engineering so much more. One of the things that I wanted to really point out is the professors in chemical engineering are the highest quality that I think like you can get at this school. Um, I've talked to so many people in different streams and although there's a lot of amazing professors out there. I think Chem Eng, like really takes the cake for this one. We have a lot of like youth in our department. Um, there's not a lot of like old habits and like old ways and like everyone is super accommodating. Um, everyone's really flexible and all the professors are like extremely knowledgeable. Uh, they make themselves available. Um, yeah, they're absolutely 100% like, amazing. And I have not had a professor in chemical engineering that I don't like. And like in addition, I find in chemical engineering, like the teaching assistants are usually like great. The tutorials are run well. Um, and I just think like all over, like instruction is one of, I think ChemEng's biggest strong suits. So if that's something that like you really, really care about, like I would definitely look into that. So that's one of my comments. Yeah, all the props are super approachable and they're always like, especially now that you know, the situation is kind of rough for everyone and being online, like a lot of our profs are like always online, you email them, they respond like super quickly and they're always willing to help you. And that translates to like when we're actually on campus as well. They're always open for office hours. Um, I don't know, like Vince, he teaches our um, thermal course right now. And he also teaches a second year I biomed course, but he's like always on, like you, I can email him and I have a response in like five minutes and he's super, super approachable and always willing to help out. Um, and he is in a chemical engineering prof and he's, yeah, he's really great. So I agree with Lauren on that one. Yeah, I feel like um, most of the chem courses that we have now, the lecture style is more of a more like it's almost more of a conversation instead of like the per, like the prof or whatever, just kind of like telling if we're doing a problem or whatever. Um, and one of us puts up our hands like he'll fully explain it and like show the rest of the class like it definitely it's definitely a friendly environment to be in to learn like I've other engineering ones and it kind of seems like they just kind of like yell at you for the full hour with all this stuff like it feels it definitely feels like you know like they care about you learning about it so if you have a question then they're happy to answer it yeah and they really uh, care about your success as well I feel like they're all yeah. my profs we've had they all like really want you to succeed um, and it's very evident in the way that they teach the way they answer your questions um, that they're there to help you and yeah, all, just, my, uh, all the profs know all of our names as well as like other things like yeah, I like all of them know yeah. like every prof that I've had within the first like two weeks they know who I am and I'm like oh <laughs> I've only talked to you like three times but cool so yeah and just yeah, that, to add to that oh sorry Lauren go ahead oh I was just gonna say um that the environment's like so friendly that we call them by their first names as well most profs um and also um our most of our material is already open book so it, like the transition from um 
like in person to online was just that much more seamless because like we already had access to most of our material anyways. Um, and so like they're also technology technologically advanced enough to actually figure out the whole system. So like the transition was very seamless. Um, and also just from another perspective, I'm also on the Chemenge Club. Um, so just talking about like how well we do compared to other Chemenge faculties in Canada, we go to this conference every year. And so um, I think two years ago, we actually won the award for best in academic environment in uh, McMaster. And so our, that just goes to show like how great our Chemenge faculty actually is. Yeah, so, like I wanted to get into the open book like tests and like that's something that's really unique to chemical engineering that like really a lot of other faculties don't have. Um, so because in Chemeng you use like a lot of tables for like pressures and volumes, um, that's pretty much a lot of Chemeng is like temperature, volume and pressure and how they relate to each other. So like, probably the most relevant thing that you have learned thus far that will help you in Chemeng is like the ideal gas law and like grade 11 chemistry. Don't worry, don't worry <laughs> yep. they will read it to you. Um, but that's probably like the most relevant thing that like you'll have you'll have like coming into um, second year. But what's really important is because we use a lot of like enthalpy tables, entropy tables, different things like that, they allow us to bring textbooks in. So pretty much every single course is either open textbook and or open notes. Um, honestly, in third year, I don't have a single course that's only open textbook. All of my courses are open notes. So you can bring in like literally anything you want into the exam except like electronics, um, which is like awesome. So you can bring in like past tests, your own notes, like you can print off teacher's notes. Uh, you can print off whatever you want and you can bring them in and like it's always super helpful to have um, like that structure and you can like look around and look at different things um, and kind of help like guide your way through a question. I like specifically remember last year in heat transfer or last semester in heat transfer, which is a third year course. We can go over the courses in a sec, mm -hmm. but which is a third year course. I didn't realize that the content uh, went up to like a certain level. And there was a question on the heat transfer test that I like literally hadn't reviewed yet. And I actually sat there in the midterm and read the textbook chapter on that question and then answered the question like after I read the textbook chapter in the test. Um, so it's like really flexible and like they do a really good job of like letting you do that because um, like Chem Eng, as a faculty believes like they believe wholeheartedly that like you shouldn't be put in a situation that you couldn't be put in in like a real life scenario. And there's no situation that you wouldn't be able to like use your notes, like do stuff like that. So they're really like, they believe strongly in that. And like in addition, most of the classes that you'll take in like second year and third year have um, group rewrites as well. So like once you finish writing your individual test, you go back and write the same test as a group and like you get to talk with your group. And then part of your grade becomes that new group rewrite, which is like usually better. So there's a few ways that Chemeng like is a little bit different than other faculties. It really goes to show that they really focus on application of your knowledge rather than memorizing things. Like that's not really what they want us to be using or like using our for. Like what's the point of memorizing all these values and like just like use a table on the test and you can apply that um, into different questions. So um, that I think that focus is like super important. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And then do you guys Except want to like an, uh, talk about the second year courses? Pardon? Does one of you want to talk about like the second year courses that you're taking right now? Yeah, I can go into that a little bit. So and um, we talked about, I touched on this earlier, but in your first semester, you're going to have ChemEng Principles 1, which is kind of like where you learn like the very, very basics of like what ChemEng is about. Um, and you kind of like, start from square one, like you learn the ideal gas law again, like you don't need to know any pre-existing information. Um, it starts right from the, right from the beginning. Um, and you also take the numerical methods course that Lauren touched on, and that was a new addition this year. So it used to be a third year course, um, but because third year first semester chem um, has been pretty heavy for a long time, they decided to change it to a second year course just to make the overall, um, to make it easier for third year students. So that's now a first semester course where you do a lot of MATLAB. Um, and then you have your, um, I'm blanking on the other course. That we, that's the only two chem courses that we have. Um, and then in second semester, you have ChemEng Principles 2, which is very different from ChemEng Principles 1. You're going into more of a sort of related to like thermodynamics. You kind of go into some of the stuff from grade 12 that you learned about thermo. So like you're going to entropy and that kind of idea. Um, and you also have your um, oh, fluid mechanics. Sorry, I don't know why I'm forgetting the courses that I'm taking right now. <laughs> you have fluid mechanics, which is a bit more like physics-based. 
you're kind of learning about pressure and pipes and like temperature kind of being that same relation, but in terms of like different uh, processes. So pass along to one of you guys to explain the rest if you want. So I'm not doing all the talking about it. Also in Chem Eng, uh, second semester, you take Chem 1A3, which the rest of the streams take in third year, um, under, other than HESI. So HESI and Chem Eng take Chem 1A3 in second year. Um, also, just talking about the iBio design project uh, course that we take this year, it's a lot more chem based than like first year design projects were, just so like they can touch on kind of all the streams and get everyone's input into the project. So um, I know that like chem students find it easier to grasp the concepts than like other uh, streams, for example. Yeah, and then in addition, like I'm not totally sure how it is this year, but like uh, Dr. Ball, he's the anatomy TA, um, or sorry, the anatomy professor. Uh, he showed me like a um, outline last year where they actually like went over anatomy marks based on like streams and everything um, to get like a grasp on like how different streams like struggle with anatomy. Um, and me mechanical engineering and chemical engineering besides HESI had like the best marks in anatomy overall in my year. Um, so like I think it does go to show like that I think ChemEng is one of the ones that uh, gives like a, a little bit of a nicer transition from first to second year. And then uh, ChemEng ramps up a little bit more in third year. But like I find that it it like gradually gets a little bit harder as you go through ChemEng. And in third year, it kind of reaches its peak and then it like tapers down. Whereas I know in some other faculties, like they really like there's like a complete switch between first year and second year. And like sometimes it can be a lot, especially like anatomy is like a really difficult course which you guys will all get to experience next year um but it is like very heavy memorization and like it's difficult to balance with our other courses um so like that's something as well if you like care about that is like I do find that ChemEng has like a pretty gradual transition into second year especially uh your first courses like taking the one EO4 or the numerical methods like that's a really hefty course but then your other courses are a, a little bit lighter in ChemEng and like ChemEng principles goes really really slow through the first half and like really gets you situated um which like was one of my favorite things about transferring into chem for sure yeah, especially if you decide to take math in the summer which I said if you talk to anyone in second or third year they'll definitely recommend it if you have the opportunity to um it makes your course load even easier so if you take like 2z 2z03 for example like first semester you only have five courses so you can like really focus on anatomy especially because first semester anatomy is definitely more challenging concepts than second semester anatomy in my opinion maybe other people have different opinions but um it was easier i mean it was a lot of work still but um it was a bit easier to manage with a lighter course load in first semester especially i think if you can take 2zz in the summer too because um in chemeng you have like first semester five, second semester six, and it gets pretty um, loaded. I believe this year is, it's like, it's supposed to be okay, but uh, I don't know. It's kind of struggle going through two ZZ with everything else. Yeah, and then um, I can like transition into third semester or third year courses like a little bit if we want, and then we can like open it up uh, to questions. Um, but in third year, uh, Kemenj absolutely vamps up I had to take numerical methods in third year because it was just this year that they brought it down to second. So like, I love that idea. I think it's very helpful for uh, everyone in, in Kevenge. Um, so I took like numerical methods, uh, which is a MATLAB course. It's taught by Jake. He's like absolutely phenomenal professor. So great. Um, and then I took uh, thermodynamics. So they take the Kevenge fundamentals too, which is like intro to thermo. And then there's thermodynamics, which like very, very much vamps up from second year. Um, and then in addition to thermo, you're taking um, mass transfer and heat transfer at the same time. Um, and then you also take uh, a reactor design. Um, and then we take uh, chemical processes and synthesis. So I would say like chemical processes and synthesis is like the course that you take where you finally like feel like, yes, like I'm in ChemEng. Um, yeah, because it uses this <laughs> software called Aspen Plus, which is like a $100,000 software. So you can't get it on your computers, unfortunately, but you actually get to go and like make things like you get to design flow sheets with like pipes and valves and compressors. And you actually get to utilize all of this like pressure, volume, temperature shit that, or sorry. Oh my gosh. <laughs> all this <laughs> pressure, temperature volume stuff that you've learned for the past three years um because that's really what chem, chem is about is it's about like 
pressure, temperature, volume, how they relate to one another and how they relate to like entropy and enthalpy and like different like Gibbs energy and like different forms of um, energy and like how it's transferred is a lot of what ChemEng is. So this chemical synthesis course is like phenomenal because it actually allows you to um, like really experience like how that all goes together in like a real setting. And then what's nice about being an iBio is like we don't take orgo in third year anymore, um, which is great because that's like a really, really heavy course that a lot of other people in third year come and struggle with doing at the same time as mass transfer, heat transfer um, and thermo. But what's lucky for us is like we don't have to do that because instead we're taking like a health side course, um, which is epidemiology, which like really um, clears up a little bit more of our schedule. So like I would say chem and bio is uh, more manageable than like chem Eng itself, um, which is like one of the strengths of the iBio program, I think, is they do a good job like sprinkling some calmer like health science courses into our busy schedules. So yeah. And then does anyone have anything else? Yeah, go ahead. There's another addition onto that. Um, this is kind of unrelated to chem specifically, but the epidemiology course you take in third year, if you do decide to take math in the summer, um, you I took epidemiology this year in the first semester, just there I took math, so I um, added on another course because I had room for it. So if you have the opportunity to do that, um, I found that super helpful and will probably help me next year with the more difficult courses in third year first, sem first semester. Sorry. So um, if you do want to look into that, you just have to get permission from the department to take it, and then you're good to go. Yeah, and just to talk about like some further courses, like some upper year courses, um, you'll see that like with the IBHS technical electives and the ChemEng technical electives, there's a lot of overlap. So um, like that also just goes to show how well the two merge together, but like that also opens up a lot of avenues. So let's say that a, a course that you chose to fill up your ChemEng technical elective requirement, um, you've already done, so you don't have to choose that for your iBio technical elective, so then you can choose a different one. That you're more interested in, for example, whereas like people in other streams don't get access to our ChemEng technical electives list. Yeah, there's some really cool courses that you can take in upper years. You have like specific to bio related things. You can take bio separations engineering, bio reactions, as well as chemical applications in medicine, which I've heard is a super amazing course. So I'm super like really excited to take that one. Um, so you get a lot more specific. So I know one of the questions on the doc that someone asked, and we'll definitely be touching on that, but I can open that up for discussion now. So a lot of people think that ChemEng is all process based, like taking a chemical plant, like how do I design it, which that is obviously a large aspect of it. That's just like, that's not all that it is, like relating it back to pharmaceuticals. That's all like bio reactions, bio separations, you learning about um, how chem like integrates with those biological um, different topics. So you have that opportunity in upper years to more so focus on what you're more interested in rather than going into like the certain streams that are like reactors and like chemical plants and stuff like that if you're more interested in the bio side. Awesome. Do we want to like open it up to some like questions maybe? Or would we want to go through the questions that are in the Excel sheet? Yeah. We can go into these questions and then maybe um, do like a live like a live questions with someone else if you guys have additional questions to what people have already posted. Yeah, sure. Um Probably so all I of can... your questions and go change into the live stream, but if you have any more, then we can yeah, so you can ask questions in the chat as well if you guys want to pop up questions and we can answer those. But to start, we'll just go off the Excel sheet and then if you guys pop in with a question, we can address that. Um, so there was one that I saw that was what's the difference between chem iBio and chem bio. Um, so that's one that like I can address quickly. Um, so chemical and iBio med is chemical and biomedical engineering, whereas chem bio is chemical and bioengineering. Um, so I know I know that might be a little bit confusing to figure out what the difference is. Um, but like the main difference is that uh, in the courses that you take is like in chemical and iBio, you take all these iBio like medical based courses as well as chemical. Whereas in chem bio, you're taking the chemical courses, but then in addition, you're taking like full biology courses. So those are like uh, they they may not necessarily just have to do with like, like humans or medicine at all. Like a lot of them just have to do with like organisms. You take like the basic bio, you take um, like cell bio, um, you take biochemistry. Like it's a lot more like um, biology um, and it's actually through like the Department of Science. So it's kind of a pairing between like science as well as uh, engineering, whereas iBio and chemical engineering is chemical engineering, but then you're also taking all the iBio electives. Um, in the iBio courses. So they kind of have different outcomes. Um, a lot of people that are in chem bio have similar um, aspirations and stuff as, as chem iBio does. Um, and one thing that's cool about chem iBio is 
um, it, there is an option to like transfer directly into chem bio if you're not enjoying the iBio side of um, chemical and iBiomedical engineering. Like hopefully you all are, but that's an option as well that someone in third year this year did. So he was in chemical and iBio, but he uh, preferred like the chemical courses and wanted to get more into biology. Um, so he actually dropped into just chem bio. Uh, so that's an option as well, just so that you guys know what's out there. But One other question that I saw that was um, important to address as well, <coughs> sorry, and it's uh, how much physics is involved in chem. So physics is like not, it is involved a little bit, but not in the way you'd think from first year. So 1EO3 is totally unrelated. Do you want, I mean, at least so far, we've never had to touch any of that content again. So if you don't like 1EO3, then <laughs> maybe chem is for you. Um, we use a little bit of like mechanics in fluid mechanics, but it's not really like what you learn in 1DO3 at all. Like you're not learning about like force diagrams and stuff like that. Um, you're more so learning about like understanding how fluids move through pipes and how pressure changes and the effect of like velocity and volumetric flow rate and all that fun stuff. So it's not really, it is physics, but it's not physics like you've seen it before. So I think that's also a difficult uh, thing about Kemen, just that it's not like well represented in first year courses which is also something that we really struggled with when we were planning um, the stream night that actually happened in person. Um, and like, it's really hard to explain really what ChemEng is when you haven't really been exposed to what it is. And as someone mentioned earlier, like it is process control, but it's not process control. It's about like optimization and problem solving. And um, just a little like side experience. I was at an industry night one night and they, we're talking about how they really wanted to hire like MEC and iBio or LEC and iBio. And they were talking about how they want students that um, know how to problem solve and know how to like uh, go through procedures and um, how like they know that these students are well seasoned in that. And so I kind of was like, hey, Kemensch does that too. Like we're all about process control and knowing exactly how to go from one end to another and troubleshooting definitely. Like not only through the software side of things, but even like in fluid mechanics, we're learning about like what do you do when there's extra friction from a pipe that's aging? There's all just like these little nuances that you have to cover if you want to really explain what ChemEng is. I think about like sometimes it's like solving a big puzzle. So if you have like a big system and like you know that the pressure here needs to be this thing, you know that the volumetric flow rate needs to be whatever number at this point like how are you going to get there like what are you going to do to the system or change the system to make it what you want it to be yeah i can like jump in on that one so in our third year chemical uh, process and synthesis courses we do like a design project that's like 40 percent of our grade and all that's like given so there's like a little bit of background on the information but like all, all that's given is like you're going to start with like a, a gas with like this flow rate and then like produce this and then we're given like complete freedom on like going on our own using the software that they like taught us on like how to make a flow sheet and like you think it's easy to go from here to here but like our flow sheet now has like 40 plus different like pieces of like you know tanks flash drums distillation columns like compressors turbines like everything that you can think of um to like get to where we need to go because you run the simulation and like you don't get the mole purities that you need so you have to go back and like what am I going to change in my system to like give me the output that I actually want um so like it's exactly what they said about like problem solving and like a puzzle is honestly like a good way um to put it um because like we absolutely do stuff like that and you're given a lot of like design projects which was one of the questions as well it's if it's like project based and like there is a lot of like projects in Kemenge like I'm doing a project in in both my um, third year chemical engineering courses right now. Uh, one's on MATLAB and then one's on, um, yeah, one's on MATLAB and then one's on uh, Aspen Plus, which is this like really expensive software. Um, and in my job that I'm going into uh, starting in May, they use Aspen Plus like pretty regularly and it's used in industry all the time, um, which is cool because they're actually teaching us a software that we're going to actually utilize in industry. Uh, which like arguably like doesn't happen too often like for example like Python not a lot of people actually use in industry um, so although it's like a good coding language to know it's nice to know that the stuff that you're learning is actually going to translate to something that you can do in industry. Oh yes and um, also talking about industry but talking about research okay so research oh, yeah, you can also point. put towards like the project-based iBio courses so like instead of 
um, using your research like to fill a co-op position, for example, if you don't want to do that, you can also use it towards your credits, um, which I just learned recently, actually. And also, uh, CAMENG gets a lot of funding from USRV for research. Uh, we're one of the faculties that actually gets the highest amount of funding. And um, I don't know if you guys actually went to the in-person stream night, but there were a lot of professors there that showed off their research. So for example, um, Dr. Sheardown does a lot of optom optometric, ophthalmic um, research. And then, um, for example, Dr. Hoare does a lot of um, like drug delivery research. So if you guys are interested in like mixing bio and chem together, that's a really good way to do it. Um, there's also just like straight chem research, which I will get back to you as soon as I remember. Yeah, there's different props you also do like wastewater, like research and that sort of thing but if you're interested in bio related research which i'm assuming most of you are because you're in my biomed um a, mo a lot of the profs do bio research like i say majority of the chemeng profs um yeah. do research re in relation to bio applications so you have a lot of opportunities to reach out to them and a lot of them actually do teach us <clears throat> as well so you know those profs really well and, and you can like reach out to them for research um throughout the, your second year if that's what you're interested in doing for the next summer also our new prof true he also talked about his research, which was um, catalysts. So he was doing research on how to make um, like catalytic converters in cars more eco-friendly, eco for example. So if like environmental research is something that you're interested in, we also do that. Hmm. Let's see. Any questions that we haven't addressed yet. Oh, someone asked, what does the community feel like in chem? Um, we touched on this a little bit, but I think the community in ChemEng is super unique and um, it's like super, it's really close knit and you get that sense right away. Like, you know, pretty much everyone in your year in chem and you all, it kind of feels like, like iBio is super, a super close community, but then like chem is like another really close community that you're a part of. So you're kind of a part of like two different extremes like that, which is super neat. And they also have this really cool thing. I mean, Anusha can talk about this more because she's part of the Chem Eng Club. But um, we run these, things, these events where you get to like basically have dinner with your professors at Boston Pizza, which is super cool. And, and you can talk more about that because you have helped run those before. But I thought yeah. that was super cool. I don't think a lot of other streams do that. Mm -hmm. Just to add on to that, um, we do that once a semester. And at the end of the year, this year we couldn't do it because of... Uh, reasons but um we were supposed <laughs> to have an event which we do every year called roast the profs so we book out a venue and we invite the professors and we actually get to roast them based off of everything that's happened from the past year uh lauren if you went last year would you like to talk about it i didn't go to roast the profs last year unfortunately i'm so sorry but like i've heard about it and our profs are like super memey they're all like really funny and like like I said, they're all really young, so I can definitely assume there is lots of good content to roast the props with, but I actually didn't <laughs> go last year, unfortunately. But yeah, the ChemEng Club is really cool. It's, I'd say, one of the more, like, involved societies in, like, clubs on campus, um, and, like, out of faculties, like, a lot of societies, they mainly just plan their industry nights, and, like, I find that that's pretty much it, um, but, like, what ChemEng does, like, a lot of uh, reaching out and like um, planning other stuff which is fun they do like pancake uh, breakfasts they do lots of fundraisers there's a chemical engineering conference that you can go to um, so there's lots of fundraisers for that they do like smokers which is the Boston pizza thing and then they do roast the profs and like I think they do like a few other ones honestly they're pretty awesome um, we love the chem Eng club and they well, do like they do well thing where we do like paint nights periodically or we're gonna do like uh, movie nights and game nights. Oh, and we also have a really close relationship with our graduate students. So um, like we just recently we had a game night with the graduates. And so uh, we got to talk to them about their research, for example. And it's just to go goes to show that like you can transition into grad school pretty easily with chem too. Sorry to cut you. Oh, I was just gonna say they run study sessions as well, like popcorn and pop in, where uh, they'll have upper year students and like TAs come in and like help um, do study sessions, which is cool. So I just wanted to quickly answer that one question that says like, what kind of resources and facilities are available? So like the ChemEng Club has a lot of them. And the other thing I wanted to just mention is the CSTR, um, which is a study room in the third floor of JHE right across from the chemical engineering grad lounge. Um, and it's for like only for ChemEng students. And it's like a big room that just has like really long tables. 
honestly like 50 or so people could fit in there just like a huge space with tables and computers and on those computers there's like aspen plus matlab um all of the software that you're going to use in upper years so like we went to um we, we go there like quite frequently to do our aspen plus projects um and different things like that so that's a resource that's uh, only limited to chemeng it's like our lounge i guess you could say um are there any other questions oh, i was just gonna say we also take courses with material students so um also like how interdisciplinary your courses are so it's pretty nice that you get to um touch up on other subjects too i feel like a lot of people when they're deciding a lot of people who want, are interested in chem are also interested in materials and i feel like that's a really common thing that people are picking between so um, I can't speak for if you guys listen to the materials uh, live stream. Obviously, they probably told you about that if that's what you're interested in. But I feel like materials is more like a very specific branch of chem. So you're kind of like chem is looking at like bigger scale processes. You're looking at like how to solve those big problems. Whereas materials are looking at like very specific like atomic structures and like how you're going to design that specific material to do what you want. Um, whereas we're looking at designing like more system based things. So that's kind of the big difference in terms of like what you're going to be interested in. Um, so definitely like wait, look at my biggest advice for someone struggling with that is to look at the courses. Um, that's how I made my choice between materials and chem. Look at those third, fourth, even fifth year courses that we're going to be taking and see like in what situation you're going to be happier. Like what I think a lot of people do think towards like where, what career are you going to be in, which is super important, obviously, because that's going to be the rest of your life. But it's also important that you're going to be happy it, with your choice for the next four years because this Four years is a long time, and if you're really not enjoying the courses that you're taking, um, it'll be a lot harder for you to um, study for them, a lot harder for you to focus on those courses and do well if you're not enjoying what you're learning. So definitely look at those and see which ones interest you more, because that's going to make your whole life in university and your degree uh, and experience a lot better. Yeah. And does anyone have any other questions? You can feel free to like just type them into the chat as well if you want. Or turn on your mic if you want to. Yeah, you can options. ask us questions. I'm just like reading over the questions, like the general questions, and I guess I'll like a address one of them just while we're like waiting for people to pop in. A lot of them are about anatomy. Um, so like I'll just quickly like talk about anatomy, I guess, if you guys want. Um, so anatomy is my favorite course I've taken at McMaster. Um, I absolutely loved it. It is really, really cool, a really unique course that uh, you don't get to take um, if you like don't have access to the labs that they do um, at Mac. Um, so like I think it's absolutely a phenomenal course, but like I'm not going to sugarcoat it. It's absolutely difficult um, to take anatomy with all of your eng courses. Uh, this happens in every stream, although like yes, some streams have a little bit lighter course in second year, like all streams struggle with um, anatomy, balancing it with an engineering uh, degree. Um, but like, I just want to reiterate, like, it's okay to like not do well in a course and like, it's okay to um, like, you don't need to have all these perfect marks all the time. Like, that's totally fine. And like, anatomy is one of those courses that like, you get what you put into it. So if you put in like as much time as you can, like, you're going to get a good grade in the course because it's very like, very memorization based. So like, the more time you study, the more time you put into it, the better you're going to do in the course. Um, so like, Yes, it's it's possible to do well in anatomy and still do well in your other courses, but like it's definitely a challenging course um, that you're going to take in second year. So be excited for it and be ready for it. But it is also a really cool course. And again, one of my favorite courses I've taken at Mac. Um, so, yeah, it's a good one. Definitely. I agree. Definitely the most interesting course. And like I love like learning about it and being in the lab. It's super cool. But yes, it is definitely challenging to balance it with everything else. And it's important not to get discouraged if you don't do well in the midterm, if you don't do well in the exam, because honestly, majority of people don't. And that's okay. Um, it's about, and I'm one of those courses that when people say like, it's about the learning, that's really what it is. You come out with a grade, yes, but like you, you genuinely feel smarter after you take anatomy. Like you understand things about like the body that you just like didn't even know like, were possible, especially learning about like the like your central nervous system and your brain and how it works, just like mind blowing. You're just like, whoa, I didn't know that. <laughs> That's pretty cool. So mm -hmm. definitely it is what you make it. So like put the time in um, to learn it. If you put the time in throughout the semester rather than cramming it all in before the exam, you're definitely gonna do better. Um, I mean, you can cram it, but you definitely won't be as successful as you would have been if you had put the time in every single week to do, learn it. 
I can add on like just here I, another question talks about like labs. Um, we don't have any labs in uh, second year and third year um, chemical engineering besides like the chemistry 1A3 lab. Um, so besides that, we're not in like a, a lab scenario like you are in like um, physics or anything like that. We don't have any like submit all this stuff in like three hours like you do in like coding. Um, none of that happens. Uh, all of our tutorials and labs sections like sometimes we have scheduled labs but we get to go in and like work on a software so in matlab we, we sit down and we have like something that we can complete um but it's always participation marks and it's showing up trying to do the problems asking help from tas um and then you just like sign off that you showed up and that you worked hard whatever um so we don't have any like you have to sit down um do all this work and then uh, like leave every week labs. However, in third year, you're going to have lab exams and same in second year. So there is a few softwares that are necessary for accreditation in order to have a professional engineering degree. MATLAB is one of them. Aspen Plus is one of them. Um, I think there's a few other softwares that we learn in upper years. Um, so like we do have to take an exam on it just to say that we did in order to get accredited. Um, so there is a lab exam. Um, in both those classes, but we don't have any like labs or we have to go in and, and do projects like they do in um, first year or anything. So it is a little bit different, but. That's also a difference between material and chem that I've noticed. Um, I was actually quite confused when I first came into second year because our profs were telling us, oh, you see those like lab sections in your schedule? Those aren't labs. Those are actually tutorials. And then those tutorial sections, those are actually lectures. And so um, that was kind of confusing when we came in, but um, I've noticed that like people that are in materials actually do have to write lab reports and actually get to work with like substances, whereas um, our our labs are actually just tutorials working on the projects and uh, problems that we get. Yeah, and then we take a course called 3LO2, which is a two credit lab course in third year. I'm not in it right now because I transferred from um, I transferred into ChemEng late, so I'm currently taking a, a second year technical communications course that all the other iBios took in their second year. Um, but I think they actually pushed it to third year for good now, so you won't actually take it until third year. Like, I'm not taking it with these people here. I'm taking it with uh, just the second year, like, straight chem people right now. Um, it's technical communication. It's pretty basic. You do, like, a mock interview, and now you write a paper pretty pretty relaxing. It's a nice break from the rest of your courses. Um, but we do have a lab course um, that where we it's like just lab skills. So there's like, I think one or two lectures a week, but then you just go in, you do a lab and you write a lab report in third year. Um, but it's like just teaching you basic lab skills that you can apply in whatever setting you want. Um, but yeah, no like computer labs or coding labs or anything like that. Yeah, it probably will definitely probably do more labs, especially in upper years, like fourth and fifth year, more specific courses. But I mean, we can't really touch on that with a lot of knowledge yet because none of us are there. So, yep. so if you look at the course um, descriptions, you might be able to see which courses could have labs later on. But we can't really touch on that yet. <laughs> yeah, but just like it's important to know that in second year, some of the courses will say they have labs, but um, yeah, they, they don't, don't actually. actually have labs. <laughs> Mm -hmm. tutorial is an extra lecture so you, usually there's four lectures a week in some of our courses and then the lab is actually like a tutorial where you sit down and do questions with like a ta um, so yeah there's not any labs really in second year particularly does anyone else have any questions before we wrap up unless i don't see i think we've answered pretty much all the questions on the doc so um if anyone feels like their question wasn't answered uh, the way they wanted to, if they have more, please take the opportunity now to reach out to us. You guys can also message it to us, like on Facebook, um, or at least I'm comfortable with uh, that. And yeah, or, for sure. Yeah, you can post on your 2024 yeah. chat. Um, or yeah. we will leave our like social Teams media chat if there's any like last minute questions. Yeah, we can post it in this, like in the Teams group chat. Like, if you go to, like, when you look at the chat after we um, end the meeting, we can all post our emails and, like, information. If you guys want to reach out to us privately to ask us any more questions, we'd be happy to talk to you more if you have any other specific things to talk about. Yeah. No questions? <laughs> 
All right, well, then I guess we'll wrap it up. But I guess just like in closing, um, I'll just like reiterate my favorite thing about Kemenge. Um, my favorite thing about Kemenge is the professors. They're absolutely phenomenal. I'll talk about how much I love Kemenge professors until <laughs> I die. They're great. Love them all. Uh, yeah, we go by like first name basis with like most of them. Um, they're like really young and like youthful and really accommodating. I write with SAS, so like that means student accessibility services, if anyone um, doesn't know what it is. And like professors are great. Uh, all of them like leave their personal cell phone number and I like can call them if I have questions, which I've literally never had anyone do in anything outside of Chemeng. Like even the iBio courses don't do that for me, which I wish that they did. But like it's always just these like Chemeng profs that do that for me and they're like phenomenal. Um, even some of them like come into the student accessibility services to like check in on me and it's all the way at like Centro when like the rest of the class is writing at like MDCL or even like Canadian Martyrs. So like it just really goes to show like how great they are and like how much they actually care about like each individual student and like the way that they learn. So yeah. Yeah, I think that's one of the best parts about Kevin is definitely the profs. Like Jake fully put his like phone number on our course outline. I was like, you don't want to email me. Like you can just text. <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> So I like my favorite part about Chemeng is obviously what Lauren said, but also it's like the, the community you have in Chem um, is super unique. It's just like similar to how you guys feel. I feel like or personally how I feel about the iBio community. You know everyone, everyone's a familiar face, everyone's willing to help you if you reach out on the group chat and say, like, hey, I'm having a problem with this. Can someone please help me? Um it's the same way in Chem, you bring an issue, text the group chat, everyone's there to help each other and support each other um, in being successful in all of our courses. And the like profs are there to support you. Like, <laughs> yeah, one of my, it's probably my, my most favorite thing about ChemEng is um, the way that it's more problem based. So like the, like what they're trying to teach you is how to like, how to apply the concept to the problem, not just what the concept is. Right. So that goes along with being able, being everything, being open book, right? Like, you, cause they know in, in the real life, like in the real world, if you need to look up something, you're going to be able to look up something. But they just really they want you to know how to apply like what you like the information that you find to a problem and like I feel like that's the most practical that like way that they could teach that. Yeah, and I, I fully agree with uh, everyone. I definitely think that the profs are the best part. Like it's not, not just what they do while you're taking the course, but it's also what they do after you're done taking the course. For example, like all the profs will still remember your name. They'll say hi to you in the hallways. They really do go above and beyond and treat you like more than just a number. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, like even like if you see any of your profs like walking in the hallway, you can like say hi to them. They recognize you. They know who you are. And then, like, for example, like our Chem 1A3 prof, I'll see him walking by and then like my like instinct is to say hi because I do that with all my other profs. And I'm like, wait, he doesn't know who I am because that's a 500 person lecture. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, like an instinct to say hi because I know either prof so well. And they do like a good job about getting to know you like personally, like Vince will literally like come up to me and be like, how's your brother? Or, like, and like, just ask me questions like about like things that he just knows about me. And like, that's really cool. And they just like, they really take the time to actually like, reach out, like get to know their students, get to know what they like, what they dislike. They know like all of their names, like even the quiet kids that like never answer a question or ask a question or like speak out, like they know your names, which is like crazy. I swear that they just like sit there and like memorize pictures of you and names before like lecture I feel that's what they do but anyways they're awesome I bet my friend Eric ten dollars when he Vince was our he's the iBio um 2PO3 professor and uh Eric had a question and it was 11 o'clock at night and I had Vince in all of my chemeng courses and I bet Eric ten dollars that he will respond to his email in under five minutes and Eric was like, no way he will respond to his email in under five minutes. And he did. I've emailed Vince at like 11.50 before assignments are due like probably five plus times and like always without a fail, get an answer. Like he's phenomenal. All the professors oh, are phenomenal. Yeah. And you know, even, especially now that we're all online, we have our 2PO3, I'm sure you guys have heard about this from other live streams as well. It's a project-based course. So you're kind of applying genetic engineering and synthetic biology to solve a um, problem of your choice. And I was struggling last week to develop a model on MATLAB for my project that was due. And I think I called him like every like four to five days last week. And he talked to me on the phone for like half an hour every time trying to like solve because I had so many issues and I like couldn't figure stuff out. And he just like fully went through with me. I shared my screen and he just like went through and helped me fix it. And now my model works. So he's the best. <laughs> Would yep. be successful without it. 
Honestly, I'll just throw in one more thing just to vamp up Vince because he's so great. <laughs> I'm in technical communication and I had like a peer review on my paper, but the person that peer reviewed my paper like didn't really say anything. It was just like a paper's good and they like fixed like one spelling mistake and I was like so frustrated. So I sent it to Vince and then like a few hours later he sent me back like a like full peer edit where he went through like every single like sentence of mine and was like change this, add this, like find an article that says this, like literally just like tore apart my paper which was sad but anyways like super helpful and like actually like sat down and like looked through this and was like this is how you can make it better and like just just a good good prof and like that's just one professor but like they all do this and like they're all there to help you learn so I guess we'll let Andrew pop in here he probably wants to wrap it up but hi guys uh, I'm back uh, so that uh, time is up. That that brings us to the end of our, actually, it's our final uh, live stream session of this series. Um, so I'd like to thank all of the reps uh, for taking time tonight to uh, share your experience in chemical engineering. Uh, I surely found it interesting, and I hope the students that are watching uh, did too. Uh, and I'd like to thank all the students over the last couple, uh, actually the whole last uh, whole duration of this week for coming out uh, and watching these streams especially with your busy schedules and everything that's going on in the community right now. So I really appreciate everybody uh, taking the time to come together for this kind of thing. Uh, so with that said, uh, we'll wrap up this final uh, uh, um, info session. And yeah, uh, like Lauren just um, put in the chat, uh, I welcome and invite all of the reps here uh, to leave their contact information so that students can come and reach out to you guys. Um, but yeah, that's it, that's, that's all. Um, so hopefully you enjoyed. Have a great night, everybody. Stay safe, stay healthy, and that's it. Thanks, and have a great night. Thanks for coming, friends. I hope we help you make your decision easier. <laughs>